Hi, my name is Paul Schirsch and welcome to my shop. Welcome to this final segment of Marquetry 101. This is where we're going to glue up the veneer, sand it, and finish it. All right, in preparation for glue up, there's a few things that we need to gather. Uh, one thing that I'd like to clarify, in your optional kit, you had another two pieces of poplar or other veneer that we're going to be using for a backer. Uh, this oval is going to need to be glued to something, and I'm going to glue it to two other layers of veneer to make essentially a piece of plywood. I also have a clamping call, which is MDF on one side, plywood on the other, some visqueen polyethylene plastic or the bag that your project came in, some canvas, and this canvas is bushing canvas, like you saw in Veneering 101. It allows me to press up different thicknesses of veneer. So I'll put a layer of canvas down. This is the way it's going to go here. This polyethylene plastic. and I'm ready to start spreading glue. I never apply glue straight onto my fancy face veneer. Just as I would glue up a panel of any kind, I'll treat this middle ply, or this piece of veneer, as my core. So I'll apply glue only onto this, and I will stick it down onto my marquetry, apply glue only onto this middle layer to apply my backer. about right. I'll lay this down on top. Right here, this would be a good spot for it. Sort of about as much glue as you would put on a wall that you wanted to cover with one coat of medium, medium paint. Now I place my, make sure there's no debris, on. Wrap it with the uh, plastic where I've put it into the bag. Top platen. And now it's time to start working it down. I think that it'll be enough to put four clamps on this. Okay, this is cured uh, for about six hours. Uh, it was nice and warm, so the glue should be pretty well cured. Now, one thing I need to mention with this um, using PVA, polyvinyl acetate, or uh, yellow or white glue, you know, it comes in a sealed container and it dries by evaporation. So. When I take it out of the bottle and I put it into this bag or between visqueen or plastic, it doesn't have a chance to cure all the way because the moisture has nowhere to go. The panel should have glued up. There should be enough uh, air inside the veneer to have cured this glue. Uh, I do still want to leave it, uh, let it set for probably a half an hour to an hour for the glue to completely cure before I take off my shelving paper and begin to sand. So this has had some time to cure. I've aired it out for a half an hour to an hour. Uh, and you can see that the um, shelving paper does come off. And um, it leaves a slight residue. And this residue I can either scuff off, I can rub off, or I can actually use alcohol in a rag and I can remove uh, any of the adhesive left over from this, uh, from this shelving paper. Um, this came off fairly cleanly, so it looks like it's doing okay. I really like this particular brand of shelving paper. All right, fastening it down onto a extra platen. Just the perimeter. This veneer is a little bit thicker right here where I have the oval. Uh, so there's two layers here, three layers here. So it makes it very easy for me to mount down. Okay, it's all fastened down with the tape. Now it's time to scuff sand. I scuff sand starting with 100 or even 80 grit sometimes. 
I would like to break through the gum tape, but I don't want to go too far. The veneer is very thin, and I use the gum tape as a guide on how much, uh, how much tape is left. And I know that if I have still a little bit of tape on there, by the time I've stopped scuff sanding, I know I have veneer underneath. If the gum tape is gone, there's a good chance that the veneer is as well. So I'm setting it up on this clamping jig and have a block here with the sandpaper glued on. Good. I think that this is adequately scuff sanded. I still have some of the residue of tape here, which is good to know that I have some veneer on there. And now I need to wet it and remove the rest of the tape. I like to what I call lightly wet it. This is uh, maybe a little bit of an excessive water, but it shouldn't hurt anything. You know, if the veneer bubbles, I want it to bubble now, not later. Not when after I got 50 coats of French polish on it or lacquer. Uh, if it's going to fail, it's, this is a true test, so it'll get through this stage, it'll last forever. Wetting it will reactivate this gum tape adhesive and allow me to remove the rest of it using this sharpened putty knife. It's a flexible putty knife and sharpened to a razor's edge. So it looks like the rest of the gum tape has come off and I can burnish it off. And this water that's on there, what happens if the veneer is loose or isn't glued properly? The veneer has nowhere to go when it expands except up. It produces a bubble. I can see those bubbles by holding it up to the light and pressing it down. And you can actually see the bubbles coming up. And when you push down, it, it gets wet around that, around that bubble where you push the water out. Like we did in Veneering 101, I would take that bubble, slit it along the grain. If it's a burl, I would make an undulating line, or with a straight grain piece of wood, I would cut it straight, pry up that little piece of veneer, and work a little bit of this uh, polyurethane glue, this Gorilla Glue, down into the crack with a toothpick, or even smear some up on top, and put it back in the press with some visqueen or polyethylene plastic to clamp it up. Well, it looks pretty good, but let me really see. Looks good. I think I'm ready to go on to the next step, which will be cutting the oval out with the scroll saw. Okay, cutting out with the scroll saw, as you see, I'm just doing the outer perimeter right up next to the, uh, the dark burl, I'm cutting off the subply and the core ply. Now it's time for the final finish. I'll seal up this piece like I do all my furniture with shellac. Uh, shellac is a natural substance, uh, alcohol soluble, and I use this bullseye clear shellac, which is quite good for sealing up uh, my veneer work. Um, the way that I apply it, it can be applied with a brush or spray, but my preference is, is with a shellac pad. This is cheesecloth wrapped up in a uh, lint-free cloth, and what this does, it just drives the shellac right into the surface. Occasionally, if it's too thick, I can thin it down with alcohol, but in this way, I can put on a sealer coat, which will allow me to see any defects or any remaining defects or gaps or anything that I need to take care of before my final coat. I have a small a small area right here between this pedal and the background that needs to be filled. I'll do that with FAMO Professional Number One Filler. This filler is a very creamy consistency and um, it's acetone based so it shouldn't affect the alcohol too much. Where I have is this little gap and let's see it was right here. I'll put it on Anything else? Yeah, right here, there's another one right here. Now, I will leave this on until it dries, probably about three or four, maybe five minutes, depending on your humidity. Okay, the putty is dry. 
And with just 220 paper, I can scuff it back down to the veneer. And now I can slack it one more time to make sure that it's all sealed all the way through. Already dry. So very thin coat. And now it's time to lacquer. Okay, I've put a couple of coats of um, uh, lacquer on this now, and between each coat I've buffed down with 4 aught steel wool. And uh, with this semi-gloss, it looks really good. It's filled, and there's no gaps or no lines. And now this is ready to apply onto my piece of furniture. So this concludes the fourth and final segment of Marquetry 101, which was part of a three-class series of hand skills online program that I've made. You have now seen and learned the skills on how to create marquetry with wood veneer. I use these techniques all the time to create furniture, both large and small. And if you want to learn more about advanced techniques, get my masterclass DVD and book called Marquetry. I wish to thank all of my supporters and help that I've received from many others to make this class possible. And I hope to see you again soon in a future class. Until then, have fun doing woodwork. Yeah.